Yo guys, what is up? Welcome to some Age of Empires 4. Not Zero Hour today, not Command & Conquer today. If you're new to this channel, I am a Command & Conquer player. I play Zero Hour. And one of the reasons I'm a little bit late to the party and covering this game is because uh, when I play Zero Hour, I'm quite a high level player. I know what I'm talking about. I can commentate. I know all the build orders, just all kind of stuff like that. One reason I've been putting this off, because um, it actually came out on the 28th of October, I pretty much bought it on day one. It was like £50 in my country, 50 English pounds, which is like $70. So it's an expensive game. But it was, I did buy it on day one and you expect the price to go down as time goes by. But one of the reasons I've been putting it off is because uh, it feels a bit alien and a bit weird to me to go back to a game where I'm going to be considered a bit, well, definitely going to be a beginner. The last time I played this was probably like mid-2000s, maybe 2005, 2006, something like that. Probably it was Age of Empires 2 back then. There was an Age of Empires 3 released. Uh, I don't know the year when it was released, to be honest, but I do know that Age of Empires 2 is the most popular. Age of Empires 3, um, even though it's a newer game, I think they changed a little bit too much and it put a lot of the community off. Age of Empires does have a big following. I think a lot bigger than Command & Conquer. I'm not sure how it compares to StarCraft 2, but one of the reasons I want to cover this is because it's the most popular RTS games or one of the most popular RTS games, and it's definitely that for a reason and it may be something that i get hooked on in the future and maybe we'll start playing this maybe competitively let's see how far i am behind the other players so i'm on the main menu here uh we've got community just tells you a bit about schedule maintenance there's some new stuff if you're new to age they shorten it to age or aoe4 yeah they call it age code of conduct some facebook stuff customer support you can learn about the different factions. To be honest, that probably will be good for me to do because I'm going to be a complete beginner going into this. I did think about, do I want to practice a little bit and then make a video on it? But some people actually like, some people might be like me um, and actually want to learn this from the ground up rather than just me teach you and stuff. And also some people probably want to see as a Command & Conquer player and as quite a competitive player, how <clears throat> I might um, adapt and how I might learn a new thing. So um I, I think the way i'm going to approach this is rather than go through all this learning stuff first because i don't really know i don't even know what that unit there is called is it a peasant or something so <laughs> i don't have any idea what any of these advantages are for any of these factions or disadvantages um so i'm going to be a complete beginner so what i'm going to do is actually just jump into a normal game i'm going to go into probably campaign and then we are um gonna maybe i'll watch some tutorials after because i th feel like you you should jump in the game a little bit, familiarize yourself with stuff, and then we'll watch tutorials and whatever um, in the meantime. So, um, saying load save game there, it's probably from when I tested it the very first time. In 1066, William of Normandy set out to wrest the Kingdom of England from his Anglo-Saxon rival. Only one man could be king. So I think we're going to just kick off with that. Is that what it means, yeah? 1066 Hastings. There is skirmish as well. Out of war but you know what we're just going to get straight into it i just want to start playing some gameplay are we going to start on easy for those new to real-time strategy or looking for a light challenge intermediate for those familiar with real-time strategy and looking for a st strategic challenge the enemy tests defenses <clears throat> and mounts multiple simultaneous attacks this is age of empires for the way it's meant to be played so i'm probably going to stick with that hard for veterans of real-time strategy looking for a real challenge the enemy is merciless uh commonly attacking multiple fronts just because I'm brand new to this and I haven't played it since a very long time, even though I am a competitive Command & Conquer player, I'm going to start on Intermediate, and then maybe at some point we'll go back and do it on Hard, so I'm going to start with that. My first time seeing any of this. Some events leave a deep mark on history, but none on the land. This is the site of the Battle of Hastings. After almost a thousand years, no traces of the bloody conflict can be seen. But here, the fate of England turned. It's where a king was killed, and his victor claimed the throne. That's really cool how they got real footage. Don't even know how close that is to me. Hastings compared October to our own. 14th, 1066. We know what happened here on this day, thanks to this. The Bayer Tapestry. A carefully preserved illustrated record of events. It shows the main players, 
Harold, the newly crowned Anglo-Saxon King of England, and his challenger, William, Duke of Normandy. William claimed the previous king had promised him the crown. So, he assembled an army and prepared to sail to England to fight King Harold for the throne. But a storm thwarted his plans. Meanwhile, Harold discovered that a Viking invasion had landed in the north. Another threat to his crown. So he raced to fight them. In France, William waited for the right conditions to sail across the channel to England. The weather cleared. I love how they mix that real footage, man. He seized his chance. That is really good. 250 miles north, Harold had defeated the Vikings. <laughs> now, hearing of William's arrival, his army sped south. Just quickly nip north to defeat the Vikings. <laughs> On this hill, William's Norman army were ready to do battle with Harold's Anglo-Saxon men. The stage was set, and up for grabs, England itself. I think you know what, because they've mixed that kind of real footage, and that looks like proper British weather. Like, if I look outside now, it's not actually too dissimilar to that weather. And because those fields and trees and stuff look similar, I've probably even been to Hastings. I need to check actually where it is. I'm, I'm in Bedfordshire in the UK, and I'm sure... I'm sure I've been to Hastings before. So to me, the way they've mixed the real footage there with the... And then they've superimposed these these guys on it. It makes you feel like, or makes me feel like, like how real that is. Like going into this wet, cold field. Obviously, I don't know what it's like to have an arrow shot at you, but I can kind of imagine it must be pretty horrific if you get um, if you're there in this field and all of a sudden an arrow lands in your in your mate's shoulder or in your in your arm or something like that. I'd be quickly out of there. I'd very quickly realize that. <coughs> Yeah, I think like back in the day, people used to think, oh, yeah, let's go to war. And you'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then when you actually get on the battlefield, like, yeah, I've heard stories of people talking about war before. Like, I think World War One was like that. Like, they were in the, in Britain, they were all like, oh, yeah, let's go to war. But then quickly, the, the reality of war is, is a very sad and dark, horrible, horrible place. Um, yeah, I don't know what point I was trying to get across there. But <laughs> okay, so let's just go, man. Who, who are we going to be here? Are we Harold? <clears throat> On October 14, 1066, William of Normandy stood ready for battle at the base of a hill. The high ground belonged to King Harold of England and his Anglo-Saxon army. Here, on this hilltop, the fate of England would be decided. See, that this is what I don't understand. So this is a real battle that really happened. You're fighting up a hill like that. You've got a huge disadvantage. I already know now that this, this guy... Attack the enemy. Oh, no, wait. Why would you attack up this hill? Why would you not just go back a bit and say, actually, you know what? G g let's go to this hill or this tree line or something. Let's attack somewhere else. Why would you... Why would you say, oh, yeah, I know. Let's fight up this hill with a massive disadvantage. It doesn't make any sense to me. Also, this scrolling is going to be weird, man. This scrolling is going to be weird. I'm used to right-click scrolls, so this is very, very strange. Right, attack Harold's Saxon army. What do I do? Click this. Just select. Uh, can I only control these? Okay. Let's attack up this awful hill. See how this is going to go. Okay. Special ability. Attack speed. Just click it. Just press W. I didn't even know the webcam was going to be in the right place, but actually, it seems like an okay position. It would not yield. As one man fell, another took his place. Overlapping shields in tight formation made for a near impenetrable barrier. Realizing his army could not break the shield wall, William called for a retreat. What? Feign a retreat. 
Who am I selecting now? I'm going back. The Anglo Saxons into a false sense of victory, causing them to break formation. William's feigned retreat was working. The Anglo Saxon army broke their shield wall formation, leaving gaps for William to make a move. What? Why didn't you just feign a retreat in the beginning? Why are you taking the fight up this hill? So if I select all of them, I can press stop. Attack me, garrison. With Harold's I'm men no longer in shield wall formation, William could pick them off as they charged. So A is attack me. Kill the Saxons from the shield wall. Yeah, I'm going to have to sort something out with this scrolling, man. Right, let's feign a retreat from over there to the big boys. Yeah, by uh, our guy. Wait, are we, are we William? Yeah, we're William. No, wait. Yeah, we're William. Yeah, we're William. Right, so he's getting it. Rallies nearby allies to increase ranged attack speed and melee attack damage for 15 seconds. So basically increases the attack speed, everyone nearby. Do the Norman Archers. Where's the Norman Archers? Oh, wait. Use the archers against the spearmen. <clears throat> archers can attack units at range but are vulnerable to melee attacks. Yeah, you got to keep these bad boys behind. Alright. And zoom out a little tiny bit more. I just don't like this scrolling to the edge, so I'm going to have to sort something out with scrolling. You can hold right... Ma uh, sorry, you can hold middle mouse button. And where's my main guy? There he is. He's getting killed, actually. More Norman men at arms reinforced William's army. Let's get him back a bit. I don't like him. Oh, yeah. Does he really regenerate? Heals while out of combat. Yeah, he regenerates. Nah, stay back. Right, we've got to get these back now. What the hell? Making me work for this, isn't it? Right, so I can double click. It selects all of the same type. But he's doing the increased attack speed thing again. Why can't he use these horses? What's going on with these guys? I'm dying. It's not looking good, is it? I swear if we weren't fighting on this hill to start with, everything would be better. It's good to keep him in the fight just when he gets a little bit low, just make sure we pull him back, I think. Oh my. Taking his fight on this hill again, Yeah, let's get back a bit. So if I push them out of the way, is that actually having an effect on this battle or not? We are taking shots from them guys back there. <clears throat> So the attack speed is the only real micro thing I can do apart from maneuvering the units. Yeah. They've got some crazy range, them guys. Look at them. Oh, what's going on here? Didn't even realize these guys were in the fight. Additional Norman archers joined the battle. We've certainly got fewer guys out now. If I select them, I've got 69. 78 now. There's a few more. Oh, wait, my horse guy. Please. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> he escaped on 2 HP. Come on, then. Okay, so they're like a flanking unit, as you would imagine, cavalry. Where is there a fast way to select the hero, I wonder? Cavalry are good against two. Against archers that they can close distances quickly. Now the only thing standing between William and Victory was King Harold himself. King Harold. The last of Harold's men encircled their king, prepared to lay down their lives to save his. 
Oh my god. Cavalrymen took to the field. You need to protect the archers, I feel. But the other ones you can just leave them fighting, I'm pretty confident. But the archers are vulnerable and also do good damage, so. Alright, where's the big boy? Harold himself. Are we just going to kill all the little guys and then go after Harold? Or are we just going to click on Harold and just kill him at whatever cost? I think we kill all these little guys first because we're winning. He has got more guys coming there. <clears throat> I'm guessing this is like super accurate. Like they like really did take a silly fight on the hill. <laughs> You literally could have gone back probably 100 meters and you probably could have fought on your own hill. <laughs> All right, we got him. Does that mean that their troops become mine now? The Anglo-Saxon King Harold had fallen. Just like... In the confusion, some loyal soldiers fought to the death, while others scattered in panic. Yeah, if you lead us dead, you definitely wouldn't carry on fighting. Hmm. Yeah. I wouldn't be taking that far on that hill. I'd be like, this we're the invaders. We've got our own hill. Leaderless you can come to me. The last of the Anglo Saxon army fled for their lives. The Normans celebrated victory over the English king. But William's quest to rule England was just beginning. Owned. <laughs> Intermediate level. Total XP, I got to level 6 and I got 14, 29 XP. I wonder if I could have got more, like what would have got me more there, like killing more units, just hanging around and not killing the King Harold until ages. So, uh, yeah, building a castle video. I, like, I just think with that intro, with the with the real footage, like I said, with the superimposed soldiers on it and the boats and stuff and the cliffs of Dover, that's the cliffs of Dover if you're not familiar with the UK, down in the south uh, between uh, France and uh, England, the, as you approach England, you see the cliffs of Dover. It's like really, really amazing. It looks like drone footage and then superimposed the ships on it and stuff. So that was really good. Imagine if like Command & Conquer had that level of m money put into it and it was like uh trailers and intros and stuff that good in a, in a potential new game or oh, we can change the difficulty by the way down in the bottom right if we decide that's too easy or it was just mission ones to get us used to things we can change it so we're going to continue for a bit now let's maybe, maybe aim for this video to be like an hour or something at the battle of hastings the death of one man changed the course of history that looks like a much more gigantic battle than i just did was killed here on england's south coast his army defeated by William of Normandy. Anglo-Saxon rule was over forever. At Westminster Abbey on Christmas Day 1066, William was crowned the first Norman King of England. Now he had to secure power across the country. He began by stamping his mark on the landscape, building cathedrals and castles at strategic locations. Nothing like them had been seen in England before. They reminded the Anglo-Saxon population exactly who was in charge. Yeah, this makes it even more real because loads of these castles I've but seen. Not all were content with living under Norman rule. Anglo-Saxon revolts broke out across the country. King William acted quickly to crush these rebellions. But there was one region where dissent was spiraling out of control. The north of England. In 1069, a group of lords from Northumbria formed an alliance with Viking invaders. Together, they approached Norman-held York. A large city with an important cathedral, still protected by ancient Roman walls. It's literally like my home. 
Like, I've seen. And the castle fell to the rebels. I've seen all of this in real life. New kingdom was under threat. He had to get the city back under Norman control. William had no choice but to order his men north. That's exactly what the if British the countryside is like. That's a on their long march towards York. How much resistance from the rebels would they encounter? That's literally a video of England. And if I look outside now, the weather and the scenery just looks like that. Not that I live in York. I'm actually quite a bit more south than that. But I mean, I've been there. But a lot of Britain looks the same as all these hills and stuff like that. So yeah, I didn't realize how home-like this uh, game was going to be. I didn't realize. Uh, I didn't really know what to expect, to be honest. <laughs> I didn't expect loads of videos of the UK, that's for sure. Right, we're in York now, 1069. Three years later since we killed that guy. <laughs> King William's army faced an uncertain march to York. Fraught with resistance from the opposed... From those opposed to Norman rule. Okay. William the Conqueror marched north with his army of Normans determined to take back the rebel-held city of York. But in his path stood rebel towns that harbored William's northern enemies. You know, I never could take the towns back by force. You know, a couple of other good things about this game is the fact that it's not all words on the screen and you've got to read it and it's like a little text box appears. It's actually all narrated by this woman and I like her voice. And another thing is that I saw that the marketing budget for this is absolutely insane. Like I even saw the game advertised on one of them gi gigantic screens in like um, Times Square in New York. Like they've really, this is how an RTS game should be pushed and put together and stuff. It's like, this is, this is where Command and Conquer should be honestly in the level of effort and everything put into it it's just uh, another level right we need to reclaim york so no uh no no resting around today no messing around we've just got a small task of getting york back right where's our guy on our horse and is there a way to select units fast i'm like pressing all the keys now there must be some way of just selecting all fighting units or something king william's got um he heavy armor strong in melee combat Countered by spear, spearmen and crossbowmen. Nearby units do more, more damage. So is there... This has to be a way of just selecting like... What the hell did I press on? No, enter for chat. I can rotate the camera using the brackets thing. Okay. Scout. I'm a scout selected by forward slash. There must be a button, but I won't mess around with it now. I'll find that out in, the, in another... Another time. I'm guessing we're going to get ambushed at any moment. Oh, great. We've been spotted, boys. What's this red lit thing? Right, so I've got 12 archers, 15 spearmen, 10 horsemen. Okay. Oh, there's the all burn. There must be something for select all of them. Elite unit. <laughs> Destroys the unit. Okay. All right, so I guess we got to take this area. Um, probably just going to go in, surely, I think. If we find more... Let's just attack me for now. And if we find the horsemen, I'm guessing they will just rush forward and just close down the archers. Because the archers are just getting free damage, otherwise you might as well try and kill them with your, your cavalry. Can I select the individual? Yeah, I can. That's one thing I like. Like, some people probably think it's like groups of units. Like, was there a game called Legionnaire or Legion? Was it Legion? Something like that, where you used to have big blobs. Establishing their presence in the north. With reinforcements to his army soon arriving, William would need more resources to supply them. Okay. Base building, baby. This is why I'm in RTS. Base building, building barracks. Not city building, building walls and building houses. Well, yeah, we can build houses and stuff, but as long as we're building barracks and training soldiers, that's why I'm in the RTS game. Okay, build four additional farms. So, literally, this is why I'm a beginner and why I've been off making this video for so long. I have no idea how to make a farm. 
I guess I need to go get a worker. Okay, so they're called workers. Oh no, villager, villager worker. Gavis Wood does some cool stuff. Okay. So we need to build four additional farms. That's a farm. That was a hotkey. Two. Oh no. It's, it's not hotkey, that's the number I've got of them. Is there any downside to building loads of farms? Like, what does it cost? 50 wood? And six seconds, that's it. I need to build one more. So what's the hotkey for a farm? I want to, like, press F. Is there no hotkey? Okay. Okay, we built four farms. That's easy. Assign five villagers to chop some wood. Gonna build some villagers. They cost 50 wood. No, wait, 50 food. <laughs> 50 food, right. So I'm getting food from the farms I've just built, which is got from wood. All right. I told you I'm a beginner, man. I told you I'm a beginner. But give, give me time. Give me time. If you ever, if let's say you're learning to play a guitar or something, you don't just pick it up and do an amazing guitar solo straight away. Learn slowly, learn everything properly, learn the fundamentals, learn the very basics, and then you build up from there. You don't, you don't build a building and just start building it without the foundation. You got to build the foundation. So that's why I don't know how to build workers. <laughs> right. So I'm just gonna guess. I need a few more workers. I'm just gonna. I like to get my get my economy rolling, and that's gonna give me loads of food to make more workers but does this game have a population cap because that's one thing i hate about some rts that you got a cap and i'm gonna guess there is i i like that in zero it's unlimited i know that it breaks the game <laughs> but it, there really should be no limits to to anything i i think the most the most biggest battles possible are often the best assign five villages to chop wood okay so where do i get wood So is that the closest wood? Is there any closer? One, two, three, four. So I'm going to guess that's going to be limited eventually by houses. Let's get some. That's berries. That's wood. Some wood there. Right, that's five doing wood. All right, build two additional houses. Houses here. I like how it's pretty simple. I, I kind of knew, okay, go in there to build a worker. Worker was clearly there. I like how I can just click on my worker and instantly, you know, that's house. It's like pretty much the first one. Uh, what I'm not sure about is where to build. Like if I build there, is that... Oh, shit, I've been attacked. If I build there where the deer is, is that going to affect anything? And if I drag a box, yeah, it's going to select everything. So then you probably have to do that thing in StarCraft 2 where you then deselect the workers if you just want to select attack, attacking units. So yeah, that's what you do. You'd, if you want, if you quickly get an attack, you'd select all, press shift and detick that. See, this is where I might learn a bit faster than other people. But it would take a sustained effort to keep the army at full strength. Right. Oh, you can put guys in your town, I think, if you get attacked. Reinforcements have arrived. So I think if, yeah, you get rushed early on, you'd put all your guys inside of your town, inside of this thing. And I think you can fire. I think you can fire, um... Another rebel town, Fulford, stood in defiance to William's rule. Uh, I feel like the wood could be more efficient, man, because it's, like, so far away. Lumber camp, there you go, baby. So can I select idle workers? Where's, like, idle workers? Hmm. So can these drop off here now? But then they're not going to auto-resume. So that, that's a more efficient way of doing it. You built a lumber camp there. So lumber camp cost 50 wood and 20 seconds. Yeah, I like how it's all clearly displayed there. I don't like these big city builders like the survival ones where it's got like, you've got like eight resource types and then 
all these different stats. It's simple. It costs two wood and four seconds build time. That's it. That's all you need to know. All right, okay, so I need to capture full forward. If I select all that now, that's going to select some workers. So I'm going to hold shift and detick that. Now we're going to go over to full forward. Do I leave any guys behind in case we're getting wrecked? And are these my sheep? Because in this game you have sheep. Uh, what the? Where's the sheep? Yeah, why is the sheep coming? I think you can use the sheep to kill it for food early on. Watched a few videos. A guy called Spirit of the Law, probably one of the most popular uh, Age of Empires players slash YouTubers. I'm starting to hold the shift button now to select different units and stuff. Can I heal them horse guys is a question I got. <clears throat> I apologize by the way if the game sounds are too quiet here. I think they were right. But probably after I watch this video back, if for the next video, it's going to be uh, a little bit scared to attack into that, actually. Yeah, if the, if the game sounds a bit too quiet, I'll turn it up. But I also don't want it to be too loud so you can't hear me here. So if I can hold W and the attack speed increases. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Yeah, so far, everything seems maybe a little bit... I wouldn't like it if it was too hard. I was going to say too easy, but we're only like 30 minutes in. We don't want to be getting... If we got killed now, like too easy. I mean, if it got too hard and we kept getting killed a few times, probably would turn it off, actually. So, yeah, you probably... In the opening minutes, you probably want it to be easy. Probably the experienced players. Probably we're playing it on hardcore and probably are willing to die. So, there's the workers. They've got a nice little town going on. So they're going to go around. I'm just going to go straight to the arches there. It's the only thing I can do really is this attack speed, isn't it? It's the only cool thing I've got. The only like... Uh, it's not even micro really, is it? I just literally press W and that's it. I do think we need to get these horse guys though. Vanguard, Man at Arms, Light Scout, Horseman. Alright, this is ours now. Bunch of Fulford. With the Fulford Rebels eliminated, William was one step closer to York. I think you know what? Now I'm actually into it. I am actually enjoying it. And you know one cool thing that I haven't mentioned yet? Obviously, this has got multiplayer. That, uh, that buzz. Strong resistance in the city, William prepared to bolster his cavalry. The buzz of knowing. Can I hold shift? Oh, yeah, I can hold shift and click a few. Hold shift, it queues at five, just like uh, CNC3. The buzz of knowing, I can just go onto the main menu, press multiplayer, and probably press, press quick match and probably get a game instantly against the human player. I haven't had that in an RTS game for ages. I mean, last time I had that was StarCraft 2 when I just played like maybe 30 games of it and got wrecked. <laughs> Right, so what should these be doing now? Uh, get a lumber mill outside. I just don't like this inefficiency. I don't like the inefficiency of just like... Also, where's my pop limit? That's the population limit. So I've got four idle. Oh, there's, there's the idle. That's the idle thing. And if it, ah, that's good. That's good, baby. That's good. So you can only have one worker per farm. Is that right? Huh. It just keeps it simple again. One worker per farm, that's good. Because then it starts to get to the question of like, what's the optimal? Do you have five workers per farm or whatever? But if it's just if it's just limited to one, then I suppose it's just optimal, isn't it? Let's get a few. I don't even know if we need to get our base going. Oh, yeah, we do. Gather food and gold to construct a landmark. Well, we're gathering food. That's good. So I guess we're going to build something to do with gold. Mining camp. Stone and gold. Oh, would you look at that? You see how it's so easy, like... It's just all falling into place, isn't it? Is that a mining camp already? Look at this. So you can tell they've done the testing. They've given this to new players already. 
and said, "Oh, just work this out." And and then if someone if something's not clear, then they've uh, gone and made it more clear and stuff like. Look, I can tell that's gold, man. There's gold oozing out of it. But at the same time, it's like challenging me a little bit, like getting me familiar with all the stuff. Um, by the way, I didn't didn't know if to mention this or not, but I did. I did contact Age of Empires to see if they would give me a free CD key. I love a, I love a freebie, as you know. Um, and in return, obviously, I make loads of content on it, but nobody actually got back to me. Age of Empires are actually very, very hard to get. And even when I joined their Discord, someone basically told me, one of the community members told me that so popular they don't need uh, they don't need to give away free CD keys. So, but a lot of games do give me free CD keys nowadays. Uh, Rift Breaker is one of them. And that Apocalypse game we played a few games of. Uh, right. Okay, so... Let's get a few more workers. Like a solid economy. Yeah, I just don't know about the scrolling. But they threatened to Build return unless William paid them in gold. What are you threatening to return? You're running through the forest. You don't threaten me as you're being chased through the forest with spears. I'm sure it didn't happen in that order. I'm sure the game's got that a little bit, <laughs> a little bit wrong. But you don't. <laughs> if you are him, you don't. You don't turn around and threaten him. <laughs> or we will chase you until you are dead. Trust me on that. Trust me. Unless he gets in there. He's got he's got away, man. Bypass the encampment. Destroy it. Or pay the Danes the gold they demand. I ain't paying no gold, no way. Nobody bribes me. No nobody blackmails me in real life, and it's not gonna happen in this game either. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back if we pay. What Get screwed, man. Get screwed. We'll come back if you don't pay us any gold. I'll show you some gold. Show your mama some gold. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Build a landmark to advance to the next age. Okay, so that's how I advance to the next age. I've heard about your feudal age, dark age. Is that one of them? Instructor landmark. So, how do I build a landmark? Barracks on that. So he's clearly shown you which is a warrior type one. I never know if they're going to run off, by the way. Like, attack move. Is it like defensive? I never know if they get baited. Will they start running into the forest unless I micro it or, or what? And also, how do I heal some of these guys? Right, that's a house. Have we got a barracks? No, that's a market. You can buy food for gold. What's a minor workers? Not given no gold. But where's this landmark? Outpost Parad Paladis Gate? Like defensive wall? So do you build the wall? Look, look at this, what I mean. So, Palisade Gate, sorry, what am I on about? Palisade Gate. Okay, so, is this a good thing to be doing? I feel like that base is a bit exposed. If any bad guys come or anything comes, any random sheep or anything, we can actually just uh, pull them in. We can just pull him through that gate, but what's going on with that hole there? You missed a bit. What? Why did you miss it in the first place? I dragged. I dragged from there to there. So can they just easily go out now? It's just automated, yeah? Okay, and I'm guessing bad guys can't come in. All right, let's get some more gold. We've got plenty of gold actually coming in. Maybe let's get some... The only thing I'm confused about now is w how to build this landmark. I'm sure someone's screaming at the screen now like, you build a landmark this way, but I... 
haven't played this game since... Man, how do I build a landmark? Let's build a stable and let's do something we can do. Uh... Alright, there must be something I'm missing now because I can't see some of this stuff, man. Build a stable, send gold to the Danes. I'm not doing that. Or destroy the Dane camp. Uh, build a barracks then? That's the only thing I can do right now. Let's build this wall as well. I feel like we're doing something. <laughs> and Palisade Gate. Oh, you can't build that until the wall's up. Let's get them on that. So this... This... Uh... Can't see anything there. Construct a landmark. You must have to click on your town center or something. Advance the feudal age. Build a dark age landmark. You see that as a brand newcomer, if you ever release a product or something as a brand newcomer, that wasn't clear to me. I eventually figured it out, but there was nothing. Was there something to tell me that? Oh, what the? F I thought I had to click that, but no, I don't. All right, they're fighting a bit. Let's get this... Palisade Gate. So yeah, this is the bit I'm stuck on now. How do I build a... Just don't get it. I don't get it. Lumber camp, mining camp. We got that. Barracks, we got that. Outpost, we got... No, we haven't got an outpost. Uh, Palisade wall, house, mill, farm. So how do you build a landmark... Okay, so I've cut a couple of minutes there. Basically, I've just quickly Googled it and it actually it came up as a, a most popular search term. So it can't just be me who was confused about where to upgrade to the uh, the next stage. You click a worker and then you're going to click here. So before I clicked on this town and clicked this, but then I need to click on worker actually and advance the feudal age. Um, this is basically stage two. So if I can either build a council hall or abbey of kings, produce... Archers at 100% speed from the landmark. Heal all by near, heal all nearby out of combat units by two. Every 1.5 seconds. Uh, they're both pretty good, to be honest. 100% speed. Build our archers half the speed. Or you can heal everyone outside it. I'm gonna get that one actually. I'm gonna have loads of archers. Highly rate archers in any game. So if I pull them back, can they shoot from here? And they can shoot over and still hit that target. Actually, you missed one there. Right, these Danes are starting to get annoying now, to be honest with you. I'm going to have to get this barracks. Vanguard Mon at Arms. Tough infantry with good damage. High armor, but slow movement. Anti-cavalry. We'll just make a mixture, surely. That's a rally point, sir. Yeah, a few of these workers. What the hell's a worker doing over here? Get him on this. Get him on this. Is there a hotkey? I wonder if I had a worker. It must be. But yeah, that thing about clicking on the worker and then advancing, I mean, now it seems simple, but even the simplest of things to a brand newcomer feel like that might be a bit they've slipped there it should at least tell me unless i was just ignoring it because i'm known for ignoring tooltips could be that <laughs> all right construct a landmark we're doing that build a stable to produce horsemen so we can't build a stable right now probably because we haven't advanced this feudal age uh i also feel like i want um another five workers let's say I want to build more barracks. We've got loads of wood now. Maybe we can pull some off the wood or something. No. Right. Uh, okay, we've built this thing now. Archer. Right, it looks like they're building fast. Let's get hundreds there. Um, again, another barracks. Can I put these in hotkeys? One, two, and three. Yep. I need a key for select all idle workers, I feel. Let's 
scan mole on that for a second. Age of Empires is played on a competitive level, by the way. You can YouTube some of the, like, the pro players and stuff, and they're like really, really good. Um, upgrade to early. Upgrade to early mana arms. Maybe that one can just be used to upgrades. I know, where's my main guy? King William, there he is. Right, so. Okay, we've got 11 villages. We can build whatever we want. Uh, the economy's rolling nice. But we need to build... Stable here now. Oh, that's under age 2. Okay, so age 1, age 2. So it must fill up to here. There must be three, four ages in total. Blacksmith, market, archery range. Producers ranged. But we're already producing range from there, so it's a little bit confusing. Market, we've already got that. Blacksmith... How is this technology to improve some stuff? Uh, okay. Let's get that out here, maybe. I like upgrades. I like upgrades. All right, these are all still producing. Yep. Let's get the upgrades. Okay. Uh, increase. Let's just get everything here, man. Let's get everything. I feel like we need at least one more barracks. At least. Can you queue up two here? Right, so I've got one, two, three. One, two, three, four. It's like a uh, free for all in Command and Conquer when you, uh, <laughs> you GLA, you've got 10 arms dealers, you want to produce a lot of quad cannons and buggies. Now we're making early, ma early mana arms. And we'll get some spearmen as well. I feel like. Is this game a game of hard counters? Uh, not enough resources. Oh, we run out of food. Oh man, we're running out of food. So, what's a good way of getting food then? There's them sheep. I think if you get them sheep, I think it provides a quick way of getting some food, you know. Right, is this army big enough now? Yeah, we ain't paying them no uh, gold, so... They gotta die, there's no other way about it. Come on, they do little attacks and they just run away like little pussies. They need to, uh... Need to grow some balls. Are we gonna, uh, go in through the side or are we just gonna go in through the main gate? Uh, maybe the main gate's good. Let's just go in the main gate. If I attack me, if they won't just start attacking the fence, will they? Definitely need to click that again. I feel like back on there we should be producing more workers again. Um, 
What's that? Some milk. So what does the mill do? Provides a drop off point, but it also, yeah, arms on mind 15% faster. That's pretty good. Oh wow, just look at this. Destroying the Dane outpost, William stripped the rebels of a crucial ally. Yeah, boy, look at them uh, Viking boats. Mm, build a stable. But not done that yet. Sure. William's I did. ultimate goal was within his grasp. All that remained yeah. was to enter York and destroy its keep. Let's get to it. All that's left, and we just got to enter the small place that is York. I think it's pretty big, actually. And um, we got 300 gold. Hey, we actually got gold off them, see? You can even pay them gold and they live, or you can kill them and get their gold. So, pretty sure we did the right decision there. All right, so food is the limiting factor at the moment. So we definitely need to get a mill going here. Fifteen percent benefit. If you build a farm, on our overpopulation, reinforcements have arrived. Reinforcements from the south had arrived, adding nice. vital numbers to his Norman army. I double click. Do they run faster? That's one. Nah, they're not going faster, I don't think, are they? Okay, mm. army's looking pretty beefy now, especially with these guys coming, which are down here. Do I need more archers? Maximum population already re reached. So it's more houses we need. So is a house is 200 the max like on StarCraft 2? Don't tell me I can't build any more than that. Oh man. So I can never have a bigger army than this. If I sacrificed a few workers, I could get a slightly bigger army. But basically what it's saying is that's it. As many units as I've got on the screen right now, that's it. Maybe let's say advance the next age. That's what it's saying, isn't it? And that's what it's saying. Yes, a mill provides 15% benefit. Alright, this is looking pretty good now. Uh, how do we get in formation? Wedge formation. Nah, I don't like that. Let's get in the line. <laughs> Let's kill these. Easy work. Won't use that speed thing yet. Upgrades for now. Can't upgrade to the next stage yet. I don't know what requires the next stage. Uh, what is needed to get to unlock that, to be honest. Okay, City Gate. I'm guessing this is the way I'm supposed to go. Can't see the HP of it. There we go. The 
Norman army poured into York and began sacking the town as they bore down on the keep. Sounds good. Yeah, at some point in big long games, just like in StarCraft 2, you might um, sacrifice some, some of workers to make more military. Yeah, when you increase ranged attack, attack speed, and melee attack damage for 15 seconds. It doesn't say by how much, though, does it? Why isn't it saying, like, plus 10%? Or are they doing that in case they make balance changes in the future? Then they wouldn't have to update that menu as well. Is that why? Ah, uh, sack it off. Let's just kill the keep, man. Are they trying to repair it? What the hell? Yeah, we're going to lose some guys here, but we're just going to kill the keep. Just complete the objective. I think they are. Yeah, they are, they are repairing that pretty big. Pretty bad. Okay, well, GG. GG, well played, no re. I like the uh, animation the there. Fell to the Norman army and York was secured. I'm guessing that's a normal game. Was over. And William the Conqueror was uncontested as King of England. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Yeah, GG. Well played. No messing with William the Conqueror. He is called William the Conqueror for a reason. Um, I think we're going to end it there. We're about um, at an hour. And we've done, like, basically, what, the first two missions? Something like that. So, uh... Let me know if you're enjoying this. I probably will see this through. I'm going to try and do the whole thing um, because I do believe I might actually really like this. I'm already excited about it and I'm really excited about the fact that I could jump in multiplayer and play with um, other people. Like the first, the last time that I've ever done quick match or auto match, whatever it's called, and just jumped in on an RTS game was StarCraft 2 when it first came out like ages ago. So um, yeah, I, I actually really enjoyed this. I think it's really well put together. I loved all the videos and stuff like that. The only thing that disappointed me was just not being clear on that feudal age thing, but that's a tiny little thing. And it's probably just me being stupid. And um, there's probably loads of people in the chat like, oh, this is so obvious. You just click this and you do that. So, uh, or in the comments rather. So uh, yeah, let me know what you thought of this if you want to see any more from, uh, from me. And uh, yeah, GG, well played. And see you in the next one.